Hi, I'm Bharat Ramprasad, a principal software engineer with Oracle Database Sharding team. And I'd like to welcome you to a quick walkthrough video on how to deploy Oracle Database Sharding, also known as Oracle Sharded Database from OCI Marketplace on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So without further ado, let's get started with it. First up, I'm gonna click on the left hamburger navigation menu and scroll down to solutions and platform section. Here, I'm gonna click on the marketplace menu item. Doing so will bring up the OCI Marketplace home screen. And as you can see, Oracle Database Sharding is listed right at the top in the Featured App section, which makes it really easy and convenient to get to. Next, I'm gonna click on Oracle Database Sharding tile to bring up the product listing page. The Oracle Database Sharding product listing page describes the following information. On the left-hand side, you have an overview of Oracle Database Sharding and a pointer to the product homepage, followed by the marketplace user guide. So if you need any help or clarification on how to deploy or manage Oracle Database Sharding on OCI, the marketplace user guide is your best bet. On the right-hand side, you have support information, followed by version details, including features available in the current version, following which prerequisites are specified under system requirements, which are essentially highlighting the fact that since sharding employs automatic and uniform distribution of shard database resources across ADs in the current region, as well as fall domains in each AD, you as the user should make sure that you have enough number of database and compute service instances in your tenancy for the shape for which you plan to choose in the upcoming Oracle database sharding configuration screen. Moving on, let's take a look at the pricing of Oracle database sharding. And guess what? Oracle database sharding software is absolutely free. And you, as the user, only pay for the infrastructure provision by Oracle database sharding, namely the OCI database instances, compute instances, and the storage. And that is it for pricing. Pretty cool, huh? With that, let us choose the default recommended version, which is 1.0 in this case, and choose a compartment in which you want to deploy Oracle database sharding in your tenancy. In my case, I'm gonna choose sharding demo as a compartment. Once you have done that, click on launch stack. This brings us to the Oracle database sharding create stack screen. Here you can optionally add a name as well as a description for the Oracle database sharding stack. You can skip the rest and leave it at the default values. Next, now I'm gonna click next. Which brings us to the Oracle database sharding configuration screen. This screen has the following configuration sections. General configuration, shard configuration, shard catalog configuration, application configuration, shard director configuration, network settings, and finally, the SSH configuration. If you wanna give Oracle Database Sharding a quick try for a POC or are evaluating Oracle Database Sharding for your application, or are just kicking the tires with a simple Oracle Database Sharding setup, all you need to do is configure three simple inputs. First, shard database name, which is a unique name for the entire shard database and serves as a prefix for all shard database resource display names. Also, the specified shard database name must be unique within the regional subnet. Now I'm gonna name this shard database as SDB, times for shard database. Second, network settings. Here, we highly recommend you to select the create new network option so that a new regional network is provisioned on top of which Oracle database sharding resources will be applied. This option mandatorily needs to be checked for your very first Oracle database sharding deployment in a VCN for any region so that the essential networking fabric required for sharding in the current VCN and region is set up. Third, SSH public key. Upload the SSH public key from your laptop or local machine where you have previously generated a RSA key pair so that you're able to access the sharded database resource instances once Oracle database sharding is deployed. You can skip the rest of the configuration and leave it at its default values. That is pretty much the configuration you will need to input to deploy a simple Oracle database sharding on OCI. Then all you need to do is click next and in the following review screen, review your configuration variables and you can click create which will create all Oracle, uh, all the Oracle database sharding resources required and applies to Oracle shard database. Isn't that sweet and simple? Now let me step back to the sharding configuration screen and go over the rest of the configuration sections. In the general configuration section, the next input after shard database name is the sharding method, 
which is by default system managed sharding, wherein the user does not need to specify any mapping of data to shards, and the data is automatically distributed across shards using partitioning by consistent hash. System managed sharding ensures that the data is evenly and randomly distributed across all the shards, thereby eliminating data hotspots and provides uniform performance across shards. Moving on, the database software edition is enterprise extreme performance by default. Storage ma management software is LVM. License type is license included by default. You can choose to bring your own license as well. Database version is 19C by default. And that is it for the general configuration section. Moving on to a uh, shard configuration section, uh, based on your application needs, you can select the appropriate shard shape, a uh, number of primary shards, as well as database storage per shard. Moving on, let's take a look at the shard catalog configuration section. Based on your application needs, you can select the appropriate shard catalog shape as well as the shard catalog database storage. The number of primary shard catalogs is restricted to one as there can be only one primary catalog for the entire shard database. Next, let's take a look at the replication configuration section. The concept of replication factor is similar to a replica set, which basically determines how many copies of user data is maintained by Oracle shard database. The default replication configuration is one, which implies that it is a primary only setup. So that means only primary shards and primary uh, catalog are going to be deployed. You can also bump this up to two, which implies that each primary uh, shard and catalog will have a corresponding standby. Setting the application factor to two is recommended for production deployments for HA and DF purposes. I'm going to switch it back to one. Moving on, let's take a look at the shard director configuration section here. Based on your application needs, you can select the appropriate shard director compute shape as well as the number of shard directors. Note, shard directors, shards, and catalogs will be uniformly distributed across all availability domains in the current region and across all domains within each availability domain. Finally, in the network uh, settings configuration section, you can choose to use an existing uh, network by unchecking create, uh, create new network option and select a previously created uh, previously created shard database uh, uh, network uh, for, from, uh, uh, from the OCA marketplace, which you've created in the past. If not, please leave this option checked to create a new network. And I'm going to put the v, uh, VCN name as VCN demo over here. After configuring the network uh, settings, all you need to do is click next. And on the following review screen, you uh, can uh, click create, which will deploy Oracle Shard Database on OCI. Once you click create, which is what I'm going to do now, it will bring up the Oracle Resource Manager ORM job screen, which shows the progress of the Shard Database deployment. As you can see, the status of the job is accepted, and it is going to uh, move uh, to in progress, which it just did. And finally, after a few minutes, it'll move to succeeded when Oracle Database Sharding deployment is complete. Now, in the interest of time, I'll switch to an Oracle Database Sharding instance that I created in the past from OCM Marketplace. As you can see, the stack has an ORM apply job that has successfully deployed uh, a shard database for a similar configuration like the one which we just went through. Now, let's take a look at the resources menu on the left in the job screen. This is the job screen, and this is the resources menu over here. The logs view shows us the details of deployment and prints out a successfully deployed message at the very end. Variables view shows us the configuration that we just entered in the configuration screen. So users can always refer back to the variables menu and quickly verify if the inputs match what is going to be deployed or was deployed in the past. Next. Outputs view gives, uh, gives the user any information required for using or accessing uh, the deployed um, shard database components. As you can see, the outputs view provides the connection string, which you can just copy and stick it into your um, application uh, access database access uh, layer configuration code so that you can straight away um, uh, start accessing Oracle shard database that was just applied from your application like any other database. Also, as you can see, the IPs are listed here uh, so that users uh, user can um, access different uh, components of shard database. As you can probably recall from the Oracle database sharding configuration screen that we covered earlier, we had configured the Oracle shard database to have two primary shards and one shard director. 
And as you can notice, there are two shard IPs corresponding uh, to the two shard instances and one shard director IP corresponding to the shard director instance that was deployed based on the user configuration. Last but not the least, we have the associated resources view, wherein all the um, Oracle database sharding resources that were created as part of the deployment are listed. The user can just click on any of the shard links or catalog link to access its OCI uh, database system screen or uh, shard to link to access its OCI compute screen. So let, let's go ahead and do that. I clicked on the shard director link and that brings up the compute uh, native screen. Uh, which is also going to uh, give you all the metrics for the compute. Uh, let me also go ahead and click on one of the shards, shard zero, and that should give all the uh, uh, details on the DB system uh, page, including the database and the nodes. So just to summarize, as you saw, it is utterly simple, intuitive, and easy to deploy Oracle database sharding on OCI from OCI Marketplace. And it takes just a few clicks to get a production scale Oracle Shard database deployment up and running, all within a matter of few minutes. If you don't have an Oracle Cloud account yet, we highly encourage you to sign up for a free trial of Oracle Cloud and take Oracle database sharding on OCI Marketplace for a spin. That brings us to the end of this video on how to deploy Oracle database sharding from OCI Marketplace on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Stay tuned for more exciting content and videos on Oracle database sharding. Thanks for watching.